And we are live. Happy Thursday. Just going to type something in real quick. We've been having some issues with our comments not coming in. So I'm going to test out. Thanks for joining. Right on. All right. Hey, what's up? My name's Ryan, and I'm going to pass this over to our good friend up a little north. Take it away. Hi, my name is Maya, and I'm an interpreter for California State Parks, and I'm based at Apache's Point State Park in Sumo Village. And today I'm going to be talking about my personal connection to Sumo Village as a young girl. I had a flower dance ceremony there, which is a coming of age ceremony for a young girl. And that's when she's in transition, so she's becoming a, a woman. And so I had my um, ceremony there, and I was there for a course of 10 days. And I stayed in the, um, the open house that's there. And then their, their houses are usually closed, but you open them to the community for certain dances in different ceremonies. So for this dance, they, they open the house and the girl sleeps in the house and she spends her days there and she's in training so she's in training to be a, a woman so there's different things that she does she goes on runs she gathers different uh, uh, herbs for schemes and she uh, learns lessons from people that her family chooses to teach her things maybe she's being taught family history or how to leave a basket, or how to make certain teas and gather certain um, materials to make different things that you need. And so that, that takes over a course of 10 days, and she, you're not dancing the entire time, you're dancing on the, the there's, there's a few different days that you dance. And so that's when uh, the seven sisters come in, and those are seven people in her life, that her family chooses to be a part of her life, and that they have that bond, that kind of um, anti-connection kind of thing between the girl and the, the family, and so they, they're there to bring help with the dance, and so there's a part in this dance where they bring the dance down, and so the little, the, the dip, little dipper, it has seven stars, and so those are our seven sisters, and they, that's how we bring down the dance, and they're taking on that role as uh, one of the seven sisters. Mm -hmm. Let's see if there's any questions here. Um, thanks for sharing that. Um, are are any of these these dance viewable? Can, can any of the public see any of these flower dances? So for my flower dance, there was lots of people that come out of the area that came that were my family, but also my mom's co-workers were invited to come. So people that the family um, invites or people that are coming to help, they can come and support and be a part of the that dance. Mm -hmm. But for usually for other dances, we try to keep it um, people there, their energy good, them being able to participate, and so that's one thing that we have for the other <laughs> And uh, apologize for all the noise, everybody. Uh, it's uh, there happen happened to be this time coincided right when uh, when lawn mowing started out in the field. There, um, we're talking as you probably know, um, just from if you've joined us from our Facebook lives for the many weeks that we've been doing them. So on Thursdays, we often talk from Fort Humboldt State Historic Park. Um, where we do our distance learning programs. Um, and it's also a great opportunity to join um, Maya, who works up in, uh, up at Sumac Village at Patrick's Point State Park, which is uh, hopefully a place that you'll be able to come and visit. Um, and, and if you're up in the North Coast, it's a really, um, really awesome example of a partnership between California State Parks and indigenous culture, in this case, the Yurok tribe. And uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Um, looks like we, the noise died down a little bit. So I don't see any other questions. So let me see if I have um, a question for you. You know, like you um, have grown up in the North Coast. Is that right? Yeah. So can you tell me what's, um, what is a, a memory 
a good memory that you have like living here in the North Coast? Um, it's kind of a broad question, but. <laughs> so actually we were, me and Princess, another inter native interpreter that uh, works at Sume, or one of the other native interpreters, we were, we grew up in the same kind of um, world outlook with the native culture. And so our families are very heavily, um, uh, they practice ceremony and they, um, they take traditional ways super serious and we, uh, we kind of integrate them into our everyday life or into our, our summer life. So we are a part of a lot of um, things that we, we, we don't see other kids doing in school. So we were, we were thinking of, we were t trying to figure out like funny memories. And so we were talking about Sume and so we've gone there for uh, brush dances and flower dances since we were young. And we'd always think, oh, we have to get to the state, like there's there's always like a gate or like a state park right in the middle of where we go and pack the ceremony. And we didn't know it was a state park for the longest time until we worked here, which is, we've been here for about a year. And we didn't realize since we were young, we were uh, like eight or nine running around in Sume. We didn't know that the, the houses behind the trees were state park employee houses and we didn't know that you it was in a state park so we we always thought it, it's a joke now that we're like <laughs> oh you have to go through the state park to get to the village but it's actually a state park it's that's a great um example of like the difference in perspective too because you uh basically as far as i know Ness sumeg um what does it stand for again um not necessarily that it stands for anything but that it it's there and it's always been there. So it's, okay, yeah. So it's always been there. And so from one perspective, yeah, the park appeared around the, the village, even though the village at the time was uh, just a site. It wasn't, uh, didn't become a, um, it was a, a, a recreation village in um, in the early 90s. And so it's an interest interesting um, perspective. Sorry for the volume uh, there. there. Um, Vivian will try to make it a little bit louder. It's uh, we've got a lot of ambient noise today. Um, so uh, another question is how has how how has the ceremonies have they changed because of the pandemic? Have there been things that you haven't been able to do or do things differently? So there's very um, we have there's been certain circumstances where we've had a um, uh, brush dance, which is a world new ceremony, and it's part of they did part of what needed to be done in order to help heal the world and heal our community and so they had um, a portion of it uh, not too long ago and there's another jump dance that comes up later in the, the summer season and so there's two different uh, jump dances that happened this, this year and so they're kind of like on we're, we're kind of trying to figure what what we're going to do out mm -hmm. or what what we are going to do because there's a lot of things and safety safety mm -hmm. things and um, actually not been able to have another type of ceremony which is a brush dance so we haven't had any of those so far in in the summer season which they're usually probably here around four or five ready mm -hmm. so that's kind of something we miss and we miss seeing everybody in the community come out and be there and the feelings that we get there mm -hmm. so it's yeah. been a little bit weird <laughs> it definitely has yeah and uh that's something that we always kind of remind people when we when we do these facebook lives is is sometimes especially since we started the question of why are we here at the park when other people are not able to be at the park and and um a lot of the reason was because we have wanted to make sure that the park is still a, a place that we can still share that park with all of you. Um, uh, obviously, the guidelines are starting to loosen, and we're able to actually come out and visit these places. You're able to come out to to um, day use areas now, and um, very very soon in the near future, campgrounds will even be open. And so there's a lot of um, things are kind of waking up, and and we're we're able to kind of uh, have these places available. And the entire time we've been able to be out here and. and um, protect these places and make sure that 
the story of those parks is being continued to be told to everyone that's been patiently waiting for for um, the opportunity to come back out. And so it's really exciting and looking forward to being able to have people come out to Sume Village as well as Patrick's Point. And um, I think with that, maybe we should wrap it up. Looks like we've got no more questions. Um, and so thank you everybody for joining us. And thanks Maya, yeah. as always. Bye. Bye everybody. <laughs>